then do you think like uh, the diagram still keeps uh, holding its kind of ground or do you think ah. it is distilled out yes. from situations existing yes. situations okay yes yes so this is like really cool stuff uh i <laughs> i like a two or three months ago i started listening uh to the santa fe institute podcast ah cool. okay they were the the, the the these guys that were creating all this like a uh, complexity and dynamics and blah 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 okay. studies that all these architects in the 90s were using now the diagrammatic architects uh, ben barbeckel and all of them Ilya prigogine and all of these like complexity shapes and fractals and oh, okay. things yeah. out of uh, uh yeah all about have, like complex I, systems i have yeah. to look this up yeah even me i've completely yeah, missed this or i will see an image and then i will probably know better yeah yeah no no so the whole idea of like chaos theory and uh uh-huh. being, oh, okay uh, all this like studying complex systems and dynamical mm-hmm. systems yeah, cellular automata and things all of this are... stuff like I think most of this... mark wigley was also yeah yeah so a lot of this came out of this santa fe institute in in the okay. united states mm-hmm. okay now what happens right now is that because of the explosion of data yeah suddenly all this matters again because these guys the santa fe institute they were the ones doing this whole agent based modeling back in the day like we're talking about 90s or maybe even 80s yeah they they designed the models and they could do some agent based modeling uh, simulations but the data was so little yeah that whatever they simulate was not that in that they important at the end yeah but now because we have all these available data and all these like algorithms and blah 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 suddenly these guys are agent-based modeling is like amazing because now we can get new <laughs> insights of all this stuff uh so that is to say <laughs> that that that's been the idea like the idea of the diagram is to bring information and you can sort of simulate and run different options and and uh, the parametrics is also the idea that you bring information, different inputs, and then your building starts sort of acquiring some sort of shape, some sort of state where things are working in a better way, or more efficient way, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's, there is a revival, so to say, now because mm, of, okay. of, 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 of data. The diagram is the key. Uh, um, to 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 be able to master this, which is a problem that is. Oh, sorry, I'm I'm jumping into a different topic now, but <laughs> go, ahead, is a, go ahead. It is a problem that we have now because nowadays everybody can do Grasshopper. All the companies can do daylight analysis in Grasshopper. Everybody is doing the 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 desks uh, arranging by themselves in in an mm-hmm. office plan. But what is lacking? is this diagram that connects everything. It's as if everybody learned about the tools, but hmm. everybody forgot where these tools came from. Uh, or what the they were is, hoping yeah, to achieve with these tools. Otherwise, then you just like apply one daylight analysis, fine. Then you apply this other one, and, and it's like there is no connection, no intention of... You should of, slide of, the louvers on the facade and figure out which is the best position at 3 p.m., and done yeah but the whole project that came from like eisenman and the, these other yeah. guys of revealing your design process is kind of lost because they also, jumped but do you do you think like the diagram is uh or was in a way in the eisenman and i might be completely uh, i'm trying to connect these two situations like you said there's a revival of the diagram now so do you think that during the Eisenman early 90s Ben van Berkel time it was a pre thing and now because of the explosion of the data the key difference is that the diagram is now a post idea like the diagram has to be made afterwards after a sort of very ah, uh, because choice based like do you mean that the diagram was being discussed in different terms back then Yes, yes. Or was it still being discussed in these terms? 
with the Santa uh, Fe stuff. Yeah. Because I'm asking to figure out, does it have an impact on sort of um, maybe on an ontological level or a philosophical level in terms of uh, the production of meaning through architecture? Yeah. This this shift, even if we were to call it the same diagram, because back then I remember the terminology or the phrase that was common was, uh, at least in uh, an essay by, let's say, Anthony Widler, it would say that that it's in a state of becoming always the diagram, that yeah. it, it does record and represent uh, not essences, but uh, qualities of uh, uh, that must um, manifest in, in a piece of architecture but it is in a state of becoming it doesn't it's not a prescribed uh, sort of formula that that's why we call it a diagram and now uh, even with this shift uh, towards uh, let's say agent-based modeling of of spaces or of behaviors or of uh, any other aspect for that matter it still has a, a connection to of course being in a state of becoming in a different way, but uh, how does the, how does the, does the question of producing different or new meanings, uh, either philosophically or sort of specifically ontologically, still uh, uh, work, especially for you in your understanding and how you see the diagram? Does does it still work for you through this sort of post digital or whatever you want to call it? Uh, time where all that data has now become available and now yeah. how does because it's a little bit i don't know if i'm jumping or i'm going to confuse you but it's a little bit also going to that thing that you mentioned about uh, a place in sweden where they would say oh don't tell us it's a hill or a bird or a wave mm. uh, give us the cost but then that also doesn't it feel a little bit of course i don't want to make a building that looks like a bird but i'm saying doesn't it feel like the meaning is being put in the background an architectural meaning is being put in the background by the masses you know by the people who want to see how much of our city taxes will be paid yeah and if the cost uh, is too high it's not worth it so how does meaning come into play for you now with the diagram yeah uh, sorry i had a very long question i didn't think i would take that <laughs> off <laughs> no, this is good stuff so i would say um in in, in our particular case uh, here yeah. our local case um so yeah we, we ended up in this like okay don't don't give me the the, the this Reference. funny explanations of, of right. like a, yeah. iconic and analogies just tell me how much it costs uh but the truth is yeah the discussion like the the mayor here in the city uh, when he an made the official announcement that this project is not going anymore, like this one of this castle, he specifically say the discussion was very low. The As discussion very was very? Super, very low, very superficial. Okay. Oh, okay. This is the mayor criticizing the people. Interesting. Yes. Like saying, uh, yeah, okay, your, your, your voice, uh, I'm hearing what you say. We cancel the yeah. project. Fine, because that's what you asked for. But yeah. I considered that the discussion was not at, at, the, at, at a good level. Mm. Like these okay. were really silly arguments. I would say, <laughs> precisely because we architects now just show like a quick idea yeah. with costs and there is no narrative. Mm -hmm. There is okay. no time to produce a proper narrative for a project. Mm -hmm. There was no time to link our proposal, even though it was a feasibility study, but there was no time to study a bit of history, of uh, mm -hmm. create some cultural references or linkages to the to what we were proposing. Mm -hmm. Then the problem is people take the images literally, like what we show, even though it was very sort of meant to be abstract and 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 just a feasibility. It's not even the the project later there would be a competition mm -hmm. for the actual thing people just see the image and they think oh that's the final result yeah even though we work on it for two weeks <laughs> uh, they think oh that's that's horrible like we don't want that but 
but you are interested in the numbers. So now what, why are you asking me about like, if, if it looks ugly or not? Yeah. 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 There's always so, this confusion. Yeah. It's as, as if we do want to feel connected to the proposals at a yeah. deep level. Yeah. And the image should reflect that. But because there is no time, then we, we cannot produce that. So there's this divide, this sort of clashing right now. Uh, and, uh, and yes, I think in that sense, the diagram will help because the diagram creates this, allows you to create this build up. Uh, okay. You can also include cultural information as, as, right. as part yeah, of the yeah. build up of, of, of a project using a diagrammatic uh, uh, way. So you do are revealing, you're showing all the references. There is no ideas coming out of, uh, out of nowhere that you cannot explain. Like everything has mm -hmm. been laid on, on the table. On top of that, there is going to be cultural references and then people feel a, 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 an attachment, a linkage to, to the yeah. result. And the discussion can be different. But um, so in that or, sense, it's still relevant. Like we, the diagram definitely is, 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 is the thing that, that, uh, that we should use. It's important to say that the diagram, like in this case, I, I would argue that uh, a thousand years of nonlinear history of uh, Manuel de Landa is a mm -hmm. book that we should yeah. all read. Because yeah. mm -hmm. in, in that one, then you understand that the diagram is, is not the diagram. That, for yeah. example, he explains that there is three different diagrams. Uh, uh, the, the one that defines the geological, the ones that defines the bi biological, and the ones that defines the, the cultural. Mm -hmm. But the three of them sort of run parallel. So you can see yeah. the one of the geological, it will, help for, will be helpful to explain, for example, uh, things in society still, like mm -hmm. the hierarchical systems can be explained using the geological diagram. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then these these three stages uh, actually uh, it was the less Gilles the who proposed those three stages, but Manuel de Landa explains them very very well. Mm -hmm. um, so the diagram is not just like one; it's there is different versions, different kinds of diagrams. Uh, and I'm saying this because this is also then what um, the complexity studies, dynamical systems, the Santa Fe Institute is trying to mm -hmm. do. Like mm -hmm. they've been studying all these complex systems and then they say, yes, there's some things that look chaotic, but when you go inside and study them as a system, you realize that there is a sort of logic behind them. Right. And they are yeah. the ones who came up with these words of like attractors and uh, yeah. uh, and yeah, like field of possibilities and the state spaces. Uh, yeah, it also and... reminds me of the Stan Allen um, field project. The ah uh, yeah, you're talking about this. Uh, yeah, he he talks about the fields. Yeah, I know. I cannot remember the anyway, essay, but yeah, but it, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So what they what they're just saying is like there there is things that are static. Yeah, but there is also things that have movement and are always moving. Seen random, but they always have a pattern. But basically, yeah. what they were saying is like there is a diagram yeah. in the background. Even if it, it does crazy, there is always some sort of structure underneath it, which means it's a it's a diagram. So there is diagrams for there is for, for different sort of kind of situation. In this case, Manuel de Landa talks about three of them. Um, mm -hmm. And this is important because this, this whole idea of the dynamical systems uh, mm -hmm. is what helps us understand that things are not black and white, mm -hmm. but there is always a range. Like what you were saying, like things, the becoming, it's, yeah, it's yeah. sort of there, but sometimes leans to this side, sometimes leans to that side, and then sort of comes back again to this, this point. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, that's important. 